Hey, what's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today is Thursday, September 27th, 2018, and you all know what that means. It is time for another issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. That's right, it's been another wonderful week here in the world of Destiny 2, and we're going to be covering some of the things that are covered in the TWAB, which actually hit on some pretty important facets, some pretty important things that the community has been talking about for the past couple of weeks since Forsaken has come out. In particular, we're going to learn a bit more about exotic drop rates, we're going to learn a bit more about the Masterwork Core economy, and of course the Iron Banner that just concluded earlier this week, and how exactly it's going to be changing as we move forward in Destiny 2. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on into it. Now, it's certainly no secret amongst Guardians, really anybody who's been playing Destiny 2 post Forsaken, that the Masterwork Core economy has been a little bit of a hot topic. Even yours truly has had some pretty big rants concerning the way Masterworks have kind of upended the infusion economy. It's been a really important topic that a lot of different people have given their opinions on, but Bungie for the most part has stayed pretty mum about. Thankfully, they're finally breaking that silence within this week's issue of the TWAB. They have a section titled Uncommon Cores where they directly address some of the issues with Masterwork Cores. Here's what they had to say. Ever since Forsaken launched, we have received tons of feedback on a wide variety of topics. Two issues seem to stand above the rest, the cost of Masterwork Cores and the drop rate of exotic weapons and armor. We asked the investment team to talk about some of our goals with Masterwork Cores and exotic drop rates, the problems we've identified, and our plans for addressing them. And then we get to hear a bit from the Bungie investment team. We've been monitoring the community's feedback concerning Masterwork Cores and exotic drop rates. Here's a quick breakdown of our original design goals along with some of our plans to address your feedback. First up, concerning Masterwork Cores for Infusion. In this, they explain some of their philosophy for adding Masterwork Cores for Infusion, which is something, personally, I'm not a big fan of. Here were their goals. To make infusing and masterworking a meaningful choice, and that infusion and masterworks should not be mutually exclusive. Here are some of the problems they see with the current Masterwork Core economy. Masterwork Cores have a misleading name. When they were created, the definition of a pinnacle item put the emphasis almost entirely on masterworking. We expanded that definition in Forsaken, but didn't update the currency. There are not enough reliable sources to earn Masterwork Cores, which can make deciding what to spend them on too difficult. And their plans for addressing these problems are these. They've been monitoring the core supplies and the numbers aren't as high as we'd like. We're planning to create more reliable and plentiful core sources, and we're going to rename Masterwork Cores so that their purpose is more obvious. Alright, and just taking a quick moment here, can I just say... <sighs> Not really too too fond of the response here. I, I, I'm a little bit confused with the focus on the naming of Masterwork Cores. Now certainly that's something that's been brought up as a criticism, like they're called Masterwork Cores, they're meant to be for masterworking items, not for infusing items. But I, I, I feel like that's a bit of a dodge here just to say, oh well Masterwork Cores have a misleading name, we're going to change the name. The name isn't the problem. The overall problem is that really not a lot of people want Masterwork Cores for infusion, and there certainly are not enough sources for them within the game world right now. Thankfully they did address that here, and hopefully we'll be seeing some more ways to get Masterwork Cores in the future. But I don't—I just really had to say that I really don't feel like the name Masterwork Core was the, the real issue here. And it's a little bit odd that they would focus on the naming itself, rather than just the issue that, you know, Masterwork Cores probably didn't need to be added in for an infusion requirement. Again, just my opinion. But it is good to see that they are finally addressing this issue that has been plaguing a lot of people. I've already got my rant videos out about Masterwork Wars. If you want to watch that, we'll leave links to it down in the description box below if you want to hear my full thoughts. But it does create a lot of problems, especially for people who don't own Forsaken. If you're a Guardian who just started playing Destiny 2, maybe you didn't have a huge stockpile of Masterwork Cores or Legendary Shards, or if you're somebody who hasn't bought the DLC, your sources for cores are extremely limited. So I do think it's really important that Bungie has finally decided to address this. Now, almost mirroring the issues with Masterwork Cores right now, is another thing that's been going on in the community, and that is the complaint about exotic drop rates and duplicates. Ooh, man. I know everybody out there is trying to get their hands on a lot of the new Forsaken exotics. Personally, me, I haven't gotten very many of them, but I've gotten plenty of Darcy's and plenty of hard lights. Thankfully, Bungie seems to be addressing that with the next section here. This is what they had to say. They've got some new goals for exotic drop rates. Exotics are intended to be a meaningful long-term chase. Finding an exotic should be rare but impactful. Something I perfectly agree with. 
But there are, of course, problems with the current exotic drop rates. Right now, they're falling short of the impactful part of their goal. There's nothing exciting or powerful about getting your fourth fighting lion when all you really want is a two-tailed fox. And you better believe I really want the two-tailed fox. Anyways, they've got plans for addressing those problems. They plan to increase the chances for exotics to drop something you don't already have. And of course, as usual, they'll continue to monitor our feedback and give us more details about these changes before they go live. Now, I think this is actually really interesting. I like that exotics are super duper rare in the game right now. You might go a long time without getting one. That definitely sucks, but they definitely feel special when you finally get something. I got the Black Talon from completing my Crucible challenges last week, and I have been loving it. It was a great moment. It felt like a triumph and a really impactful reward. But there's definitely something to be said about the duplicates that a lot of people are getting, especially when there's so many great new exotics that people want to get their hands on. I really want to get my hands on the Chromatic Fire, but anytime I get an exotic piece of armor, it's like an Antaeus Ward or like something I've already gotten four copies of. So I'm very happy to see that they're not necessarily making exotics more prevalent, they're just going to try to introduce some of that dupe protection for the random exotics that can drop from the loot pool. Definitely an interesting way to handle that. I think this is another one of those things that a lot of Guardians were waiting to hear back from Bungie on. You know, unless you're one of those guys out there who uh, just gets all kinds of exotic drops all the time. I could use some of that RNG. But when it comes to big drops, that's not the only thing that's going to be changing. We just had the Iron Banner conclude earlier this week, and it's going to be seeing some pretty interesting changes in the future. This is another thing that a lot of you will know I had some complaints about. When it came to the drops in the Iron Banner, I definitely felt like there weren't nearly enough powerful rewards. We had those weekly bounties, you could get two powerful drops from it, and then the rest were normal legendary drops. And you know, the post-game drops and the engrams you could get from Lord Saladin both dropped items that were well below your current power level. I also made the argument that some of the bounties were maybe a little bit excessive in how long they took to complete. And thankfully, both of those issues are being addressed right here. There's going to be some pretty big changes coming to the bounties moving forward in Iron Banner. Here's what's going to be happening. First up, for the Lightbearer bounty, the required super kills have been dropped from 25 to 20. For Iron in the Blood, match completions have been dropped from 30 to 15. Now, this is one of the big ones here. Requiring 30 match completions wasn't especially hard, but it definitely was pretty time consuming. So personally, I'm happy to see them basically cut that in half. It's no longer 30 match completions, it's now only 15. For Shine On, the orbs generated has been reduced to 50 from 100. For the Iron Victory Bounty, match wins have been reduced to 7 from 10. For the Bounty to be precise, precision kills have been reduced to 50 from 100, that was another big one. And finally, for the Bounty all in a week's work, kills have been reduced from 250 to 150. Overall, greatly cutting down the time you're going to spend completing single bounties within the Iron Banner. But like I said before, that's not the only big change coming to the Iron Banner rewards. The second change is now that all bounties will provide powerful gear. This in and of itself is a massive change, and it's something I definitely applaud Bungie for. I, my argument in a previous rant video was basically that the Iron Banner is fun now. It's a, it's a pretty fun challenge to play in the new Crucible environment, at least in my opinion, but with the bounties and all that kind of stuff, it definitely didn't feel like it was as rewarding as it could have been. Just getting two powerful drops for two bounties while the rest were just giving stuff underneath your overall light level. I, I, I was definitely hoping for some more powerful drops in IB, and I'm very glad that all of the bounties are going to drop this now. That's a great incentive to get Guardians to keep coming back into the Iron Banner on multiple characters throughout the week. Now additionally, of course, this Iron Banner was the first one within D2 where power levels were enabled. Meaning if you are a higher power level, you are going to have a bit of an advantage over lower power individuals. Now a lot of Guardians feel very differently about this, but thankfully they took to the TWAB to explain exactly how that power curve works. So if you're interested in seeing exactly what the damage numbers are and how they scale based on your overall level versus the level of your opponents, be sure to check out the TWAB. They gave us this nice graph that showed exactly how power scales up and down. And here's what they had to say about it. If you're at the same level as your opponent, your outgoing damage is going to be multiplied by 1.0 so that there's no change from normal Crucible. If you're 100 power below your opponent, your outgoing damage is going to be multiplied by 0.8, or a 20% reduction. If you're 200 power below your opponent, your outgoing damage is multiplied by 0.5 for a 50% reduction. And of course, that overall curve swing works the other way. If you're 20 power above your opponent, for example, you'll deal about a 10% bonus damage against them. Which is probably why a lot of you Guardians out there were noticing that your shoulder charges may not one-shot everybody in the Iron Banner. If somebody's got 20 light levels on you, they'll survive that hit. 
I felt like I should include that because I find it really interesting to see how exactly damage scales versus power level when it comes to this sort of stuff. Because sometimes in Iron Banner it would feel way more severe than it actually was, so it's good to get some hard numbers when it comes to that. But alright Guardians, that is pretty much it for the most important bits of information within this week's swab. It's been another action-packed week here in the world of Destiny with all the changes going on within the Dreaming City. If you haven't gotten that Shattered Throne quest done, at least attempt it. It's so cool. There's so much awesome stuff in there that really every person who plays D2 should go and try to experience it at least once. But alright, it's going to be it for this one, Guardians. That's it for the news. Those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. Are you happy to hear Bungie finally address some of the issues surrounding the Masterwork Core economy? How do you feel about exotic drop rates? Are you getting a lot of duplicates or have you gotten everything under the sun? Be sure to let me know. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. Well, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, I'm the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.